Have you ever wondered what these numbers are in Yahoo Finance? These represent date values, specifically dates since the start of the Unix date, January 1, 1970. So that's the start point for Unix computers. And so these values, you can actually compute these to determine um, the number of seconds since January 1, 1970. And you can plot these values into Yahoo Finance to determine the URL that you want to use. So rather than going, let's say, to um, Yahoo Finance's page, setting the time period manually, you can actually generate this by pre-populating these dates. So I'm going to use Apple's stock price as an example here. So I'm going to copy this and in Google or in Excel, paste this in here. And so I've got my got my link here. And so what I want to do is create variables for the, the start date and the end date. Okay. And so, so the Unix start date was January 1, 1970. And to, to fill in these values, all we need to do is basically find the difference between um, our desired start date and end date and that Unix value. So let's do start date and end date. So let's say the start date we want is January 1, 2023. And as of the time I'm doing this video, it's May 29th, 2023. And so I can't just simply paste these values in here because obviously that's, that's not gonna work, right? It has to be in this specific format. And as I mentioned, these calculations are basically the number of seconds since this, this value. Now we don't have to necessarily be that, that precise, it's not gonna make a difference, but what we do need to do is count the, the difference between the start date we desire and this value, and we're gonna freeze D7. Oops, just because I want that to be the same. But what I'm gonna do here is this this just gives me the sheer number of days. That's not that's not what I'm interested in. I want to convert this into seconds. So every day has 24 hours. Multiply that by 60 minutes in an hour and multiply that by 60 seconds in a minute. That'll give me the number of seconds. And so we have this crazy large number here and that looks similar to, to what we've got here. I'm gonna copy this down and now we've got our end date. So if I plug in these values into this form, that should give me Apple stock price between the dates of January 2023 and May 29th, 2023. So what I can do is if I wanted to parse this into a formula, I'm gonna copy this and say equals that string. Okay, that's that's my string point. But what I'm gonna do is change these values. So let's say I'm gonna cut off the quotation here and use an ampersand to use this as my start date. Use another ampersand to connect the rest of the string. Now I'm gonna erase this. So I leave off, uh, leave off with the start of the next ampersand. Period two, I'm gonna cl close the quotes again. Now use ampersand to link to that ending value. And again, another ampersand to get back into the quotes. So this is a key to make sure that we're opening and closing our quotes in the right place. And that looks correct. So the key thing is we want to copy just enough of the string here. And then the part that we want to reference um, to these cells, that's where we want to close the quotes and then use the ampersand to connect it to these values. Use the ampersand again, now connect it back to the quotes. Close the quotes for the string that we need. Ampersand again, reference that other cell, and then ampersand back into the quotes. Now, you could obviously um, adjust other parts of this. We could do the same thing for the stock ticker. If we wanted to shuffle through between different tickers, let's say instead of Apple, we want to use a different ticker. But I'm not going to overcomplicate that part. I just want to use this to manipulate the dates. So I'm going to hit Control C now. I'm going to copy this this URL that I've that I've generated here go back into here and so if this works correctly so i'm going to clear this out and i'm going to paste this and this should give us 
January 1 all the way to May 29. There's no activity on May 29th, so it goes up till May 26th, but it should go all the way down to January 1, which it does. So it starts, there's no trading on January 1, but as you can see, it goes into here correctly. So let's adjust this again. Let's say this time I want to go until, let's say, March 31st of this year. And I want to go back to March 31st of 2020. So I just want that three-year stretch. So now we can see my variables have updated here. And I'm going to delete this one since this is not needed anymore. So that's my link. You see a different number, 158 here, because we're going back uh, to 2020. Control C. Go back into here. Wipe this out and do Control V. And so we should go. So see March 30th. And it's going all the way back now to March of 20. I'm going to hit the end button so to go a little quicker. But basically, you can see March 31, 2020. So just like that, you know, you can create um, that Yahoo Finance URL to make your uh, to, to potentially populate that more easily. If you want to just launch in and open that page from um, from within Excel. So that's how you can create. Um, those, those dates based on that starting Unix value. And all you really need is really just to take the difference between your desired date, the, that starting Unix date, multiply by 24, 60, and 60 again to get it into the number of seconds between this date and this date and this date and this date. And then once you've got these values, you can use those values as dates when you're, you're dealing with websites like, let's say, Yahoo Finance in this example that uses those values and that way you can create a URL that's dynamic and easy to update because obviously you could do this in Yahoo Finance but you know it can be a bit more cumbersome if you have to you know go through this and, and key in these dates or use the calendar you know it can take a little bit of time and if you want something a bit more automated you know you can generate um, these date values based on that Unix string date right from Excel. Not a terribly hard thing to do. The key thing is just remember you're starting from January 1, 1970 and you need to convert it into seconds.